So what I'm going to do in this video is walk you through the different options in the new Square for Retail checkout. What we'll be presented with initially is likely us as them asking if we want to use the new checkout experience. Now, I've already said yes, but if you are presented with that, just tap yes, and then you'll actually be taken over here to settings right here. And I can disable or enable the new card experience, but it'll take you here with this currently disabled. And what I'll do is flip that switch on. Then what we can do from here is edit square for retail grid, or we can do this from the checkout menu. We can click edit. And then what this does is it allows us to edit the grid of items that is shown. Previously, we couldn't edit that grid, but now we can. We have one called favorites. This is sort of the default one. And then we have several different menus and layers and things that we can display. So what right now is on the, on the favorites is these discounts. And these would be pre-set pre up in the dashboard. We can set those up and then it'll sync over here to the point of sale. Then we can go back. We can see our customers and different lists. So we can see the one we can see different lists from uh, from customer lists. We can see them as email subscribers, Square Online, and it'll separate them into different areas. We can also see our saved carts. I'll show you how to save a cart in just a minute. Now, what we want to do is we want to edit this, or maybe we edit the one called shortcuts. Shortcuts has a bunch of different actions. So it's add, I'll show you this again. So shortcuts is add custom amount. Boom. That lets us add a custom amount to the cart. And then we can remove it. We can add a gift card to the transaction. We can sell a physical gift card or an e-gift card or check their balance. And then we can, of course, type it in or we can scan it with our camera or barcode scanner. We can create an item view the customers like I showed you in just a second ago. We can see discounts, save carts, we can see service charges, which would be set up in the dashboard as well. But then what I want to do is I'm going to add another page and I'm just going to call it demo for this demo. And we'll click done. And then I want to add something over here. So we're going to add, and we can add like that with the little plus here, or we can add from this menu here. So we can add an item, we can select an item. So maybe you're a coffee shop and you wanna add a basic coffee as a shortcut because it's very common for people to get that. You can make it nice and quick. Or maybe you wanna add a whole category of items. Maybe there's drinks, you wanna add that whole category of drinks or something. So you can add an entire category. You can add a display group. This would be Let's just call it display. Done. And then this makes essentially a folder of items. So we can change the color to that blue. We'll go back. So then it shows that little folder here of items. So we could make this be a list of categories or we could be a, cat a category of drinks and then it pops up alcoholic drinks and beer and wine and non-alcoholic drinks. We could do it that way. Uh, I'm using food demo, uh, <laughs> food examples in a retail video, but uh, that's just what's on the mind. But what we can do with this is actually very powerful. We can make our checkout experience much more streamlined. So what I'll do is I'll go back over here. We'll go over demo. And then I want to add an action. Now that's where most of the stuff in that shortcuts is from. You can add the custom amount. You can add a gift card, create item, see customers, discounts, individual discount. So that would be for like if your customers are a member of a rewards club or a subscription list or anything like that. You can see the save cards, service charges, and individual service charges that have been set up separately again. But we have all these actions. So what this allows us to do is put items and categories and actions 
into different folders according to our desires. So then we can customize this checkout experience to our liking. Most likely for a retail setting, you'll just be using these actions of add custom amount, gift card, etc. because you probably have things barcoded. If you don't, we can help with that. But hopefully you have things barcoded, or if you don't, you can ha have your items. And you can also, in the new checkout experience, you can of course search for an item by its SKU, you can search for it by its name, you can also use this little icon right here by the uh, back to cart, and you can scan a barcode and then go back to the cart. But let me just show you a full transaction in this new checkout cart experience. So what I'll do is I'll add an item. I will do it through my all items. We'll go over here. And then I'm going to add this custom laser etched Yeti. And this presents one of the new options right here, the fulfillment. So we can now place an order for a customer and their fulfillment can be in store. That's the default because of course, if they're picking it up, you're taking them out right here. They're taking it home right now. You can also create a shipment order or a pickup order. And then what we'll do is select our different options. We can configure all of our different options of the discount, price adjustment, comp the item. That's more applicable to restaurants again. We can add a note to the item, but we can adjust the quantity and then we add it to the cart. So what this does essentially is it mirrors an online experience to the point of sale experience. So what this does is it makes it more familiar for your employees and for you because you're very used to customizing things online. You select what color you want, you select the size you want, you select all of that. And what this is doing is letting you do that very similarly to an online experience and making things more efficient because it's more familiar, it's more searchable, and you can customize and surface toward the top those items that are frequently purchased, those actions that you frequently need. Now, once we have this, if we have our taxes set up automatically or in the system already, it'll add those. We can also add a manual tax, of course. Well, we can't, but we would set up our um, tax rates in the system in the back end. Once we're here, we can add a customer. I'm going to add, I think I have a test customer called Mike C. There we go. He buys a whole lot of stuff from me. And then we can clear his cart. We can show the customer info, sell or check a gift card, redeem a reward from Square Loyalty, add a custom amount. And some of that's mirrored or rather copied from those actions that are available as well. And then next to in-store, you'll see these three dots again. So we can tap on that and we can change the fulfillment method for the entire cart. And then in-store doesn't ask for any more information because they're just taking it home. Shipment, however, we'll save that. That will ask for shipment details. And then we tap there and we'll add a name and an address and notes. And then this will allow us to add that information, purchase the shipping label all at once. I'm going to change the fulfillment. Well, let me show you this first, actually. We can change the fulfillment location to send that order over into the order system at a different location. So we can place an order here. Okay, so for instance, if you have, they want a chair, right? And you don't have it in stock, it's just like, imagine a department store. It's just like where they go, oh, we don't have that in stock. We just have the one on the floor, but we can sell you one from the department store across town and have it shipped to you, or you can pick it up. It's just like that. It lets you do that just like big retailers. So what we can do is we can sort it by name. We can sort it by in stock. Oh, look at that. Paul already has 10 of them. We tell it to do that. We save it and then it'll tell us that it's available so we can we can pick it up from a location that has it in stock now i'm going to change this to change the fulfillment method to pickup now we'll do save again 
and then it adds we want pick up details so then we can schedule them and say hey when do you want to pick it up okay you want to pick it up on Wednesday uh, what time do you want to pick it up you want to pick it up at 5 p.m. okay no problem and then we can also again do that location information so we can do it by distance we can do it by in stock we can do it by name and when I say do it by I mean sort we can sort it by the distance from where we are now we can and most of my locations have the same address but um, we can sort it by the distance whether or not it's in stock and the name of the location so we'll go back we can add notes and we click done and then it'll do our pickup order we can tap this again I'll edit my fulfillment method tell it to be in store because once we enter all of those details it's the same we just charge them and they pay for it right now we can of course save the cart so what I'll do is I'll tap save cart it'll be Mike C we can add another note but I'll just save it and then what that does if you don't know how to get back to it it clears it and you go oh no where did it go I don't have any of the information but that's what that saved carts is for we go to favorites we go to save carts and we have Mike C right there according to the name and then it populates it right there shows us the preview rather and then we can do open cart or of course we can delete it but I opened his cart and then we're going to charge him at this point if you have your card reader connected tap swipe have them pay you can accept cash manual card entry gift card card on file invoice cash app you can split it you can do all of your normal checkout options but I'm just going to do uh, we can do a house account but I'll just do other and I'll just mark it as paid we'll record payment and then we turn it over to the customer how would they like the receipt or we can ask them email text if we have a printer connected correctly we can also print but I'm just going to do no receipt and then they can also sign up or check in for rewards I have the reward system set up so it would automatically apply their points according to my point program so I have it called Appies for Appaloosa and they would get 65 Appies if they sign up now if they are already signed up but I'll just say no thanks and then you're all done and new sale so that's how you complete a transaction in the new checkout experience that's how you edit the grid right here and that's how you place an order with different fulfillment methods on the point of sale which is the biggest new feature along with those grid that grid be sure to like and subscribe let me know if you have any questions I always answer in the comments you can also email hello at appaloosa.tech if you have a more complicated project we're happy to consult on that but until next time